Hey, what's up, everybody? We are live. This is the DFS 5 pack again, kind of like uh, DirecTV gives you the free MLB package the first week. We'll do a bunch of extra members-only videos free to the public for the first week of MLB. Uh, we're going to quickly run through the game, three-game slate for tonight. One, there's no write-up for the three-game slate. We got basketball main slate. We got MLB main slate already up, so there is no write-up for anybody that's looking for it. Uh, also, I've talked to hundreds of you already. We've done some back-end website changes. If you still don't have access to the members-only page, I have an email, I have a Facebook, I have a Twitter, I have Instagram. Just reach out to me and let me know, uh, and we'll get you back up and running. Most of you should have clearance by now. That being said, let's run through this three-game night slate real quickly. And I don't know if you noticed the same thing, Bellman, as I did. I know you love slates like this, where there's going to be a major ownership discrepancy and guys that are really similar in talent and playing the ownership on some of these guys. Yeah, <clears throat> Excuse me, I like it a lot, man. I, I'm loving this slate. I'm hoping we can narrow it down in this video and uh, really find a path. Okay, so now whether or not this works out today, that's not the thing. I think it's the strategy right. that we're talking about. And like, if you look at the bottom two pitchers on the slate, Kevin Gosman and Chris Bassett, like Gosman appears to be getting multiple times the love that Bassett is. And I'm not sure that I would, why would you want to play a chalky Gosman in GPPs? Because I think Bassett's, Opportunity for success here is basically about the same. Man, I like Bassett a lot here, so I'm all about that. Um, and, yeah, give me some Seattle bats against Kalsman, like, if that's the case, for sure. Yeah, like, why are we all of a sudden confident? And he was nice last year. Kevin Kalsman had a nice season last season for San Francisco, and Seattle is not a world beater. But I don't love any of the offenses today, so this is one where I definitely don't mind because you only have to outscore a couple other teams, you know, going after one of those more low-owned approaches. All the offenses seem pretty similar on this slate, huh? Yeah, like I, the Angels to me, what, what, put it this way, the Angels and the White Sox are probably closer to the top of the offenses right here, but the Angels have to go up against Giolito, who's the best pitcher on the slate. Uh, and right. Bundy had definitely had his moments last year. You know, take him away from the Orioles, and I'm not, like, I don't want to stack against them the way I used to. For sure. I mean, I'm more interested in the White Sox and the Angels probably. and I love the White Sox offense. No Luis Robert, though. I mean, that is a pretty big loss. That said, their lineup's still really good. So I'm with you. On paper, probably the best lineup on the slate. And I'll tell you what, like, I think a big question for me, like, I think San Fran, you know, his offense is a little bit underrated. But I also like Marco Gonzalez a lot at home. Yeah, was he, uh, was he substantially better at home last year? Pretty sure he was real good at home last year. Not positive, but could have been. He was. But, whip under .8, batting average allowed under 200. ERA was about the same, but the peripherals were a lot better. And that's kind of the same thing with Bassett. Mm -hmm. This game is in Oakland. He was dominant at home last year. Yeah, I'm a Bassett guy. I'm a fan. I like him a good amount here. Do you think the Houston offense takes any steps back this year? And obviously, they don't have Springer. You know, was Altuve an aberration, do you think? Or do you think he has a bounce back here? I think he has a bounce back here, but like... I don't think he's the MVP that we're used to seeing. And, you know, they lost Brantley, like you mentioned. Didn't they? Yeah, Brantley signed with Toronto. No, Brantley went back. Didn't he go back to the Astros? That signing never went through. Really? I didn't even realize that. Wow. Um, never even realized that signing didn't go through. So, yeah, they lost Springer. Um, Is this the first time I'm ever updating you on a baseball thing? Because I swear, I get, like... I get messages from you about baseball signings like before even they're announced like publicly. What happened to the Michael Brantley to the Blue Jays deal then? I don't remember exactly, but he signed with the Blue Jays and then or they, it was said he was going to sign with the Blue Jays and then never went through and it just didn't happen. I don't know the logistics about it. I'm supposed to ask you those questions. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, wow, interesting. You're right. I mean, obviously you're right. Uh, I don't know if I, they take a step back. I'm certainly not. I'm more interested in Bassett here than I am the Houston offense. I agree. And I do. Like, again, Seattle's offense is not very good. And they're missing Kyle Lewis, who is one of their better hitters. He was nice for us a lot of times last season. But they don't have to beat, like, really good teams. There is no Yankees against a scrub pitcher. There is no Dodgers on the slate. All you need is for Seattle at home against a mediocre pitcher to have one of their better days. And there's only five other teams that you need to beat the stacks of. And like, I like the Angels offense more than Seattle, but they're going up against Giolito, who's probably the best pitcher on the slate. Agreed. Agree, agree, agree. All the way around. Okay. Uh, as far as like, let's just kind of talk through some of these White Sox guys. We know Jimenez is out for how long? 60 day DL. So he's out for a while. 
Oh, maybe, yeah, Jimenez, not Robert. Excuse me. God, I'm all sorts of messed up here. Um, Jimenez is the guy that's out for a couple months. Yeah, they lost one of their better players. You'll probably see some like Adam Eaton in the lineup today would be my guess. For sure. I mean, their lineup's still stacked with Abreu, who was amazing last year. Won the MVP, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he did. Grandal. I mean, their lineup's still very good. Um, Jake Lamb. Tim Anderson is going to be big chalk on this slate. Now, we like Tim Anderson. I'm a Tim Anderson fan. I think he's an underappreciated baseball player. I believe he won the batting title last year. He's got speed. He's got power. Uh, but in GPPs, all you need to do is pick a shortstop that beats him for the day. And I can understand why you could fade a, a 60% on Anderson or whatever he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Amen to all that. So um, as far as the Angels go, you know, Trout, he's going to be real popular today. Yeah. Otani, if he makes a lineup, will be popular as well. And it's going to be one of those things that people don't want to pick on Giolito, but they want the best player, uh, which is Mike Trout. So they're going to force their way up to him. I, I like Mike Trout every day, but Giolito's good. There's no lock for Trout to go balls deep or, you know, have a great day today. Agreed. I mean, is Giolito like getting any love here? All right, we're back now. Yeah, I was asking how much love uh, Giolito was getting here, if any. Uh, just per the Awesome All website, which literally the only thing I do here is to check out the starting pitcher love. Like it's Gosman, Bundy, Giolito, Gonzalez, Granky Bassett. Looks like where people are headed. Okay, interesting. So not really for such a small slate is like probably the best pitcher on the slate. Um I don't know. I mean, I don't see the Angels like getting Giolito here, really. Do you? No, I, I could definitely, definitely pair Giolito with Bassett in this one. He's, I don't want to pick on the Angels, but he is the best DFS pitcher playing today. This guy's got really good strikeout stuff. Uh, there's probably not going to be any issues getting enough cheap players. I mean, he's the only pitcher on the slate that can go for 40. I agree with that. And I mean, I don't want to pick on the Angels either, but I mean, on this slate, like, I don't mind it. Not at all. So I guess if I were to play one lineup, it would be a GPP lineup, and it would be Giolito and Bassett for me. I'll be different with Chris Bassett and just hope that Gosman gets hit today. That's fair. I do kind of have interest in Marco Gonzalez, like I mentioned. Okay. Uh, well, let's eliminate this. I have no interest in Zach Greinke. Yeah, I can't play Greinke. I don't have any interest in Kevin Gosman if I'm playing GPPs. If you're playing cash games, it probably makes sense just to ride the chalk here. Agree. And then Dylan Bundy was really, really good for you know stretches last year. Had some real nice starts, but I'm not really trying to go after the White Sox. No, not really me neither. I mean, especially with a guy like Bundy, like nah. And he was a lot better once he got away from Baltimore, but he will always scare the pants on me. We saw him get lit up enough times that He's a guy that even when he's in a really good spot, you still have to hold your nose a little bit and just pray. Mm-hmm. No doubt about all that. So who would be, like, if you're doing a three-entry max tonight, who would be your three pitchers then that you think you would use? Probably Giolito, Bassett, and Marco. Okay. I mean, I do like Marco, though. I could see just going <clears throat> Bassett and Marco. Like, I don't think Giolito's a lock here. I think Giolito's probably ends up better than the Angels lineup, but nothing where you, like, need, in my opinion. And the other thing to remember is early in the season, pitchers don't go that deep. Like Maeda's going to get pulled after this inning at 81 pitches. Brandon Woodruff only wins 78. Our boy Hendricks that we liked a lot was off today. and He didn't go very deep into the ball game. So always temper what it is that you expect out of these guys. Uh, you know, really, really good pitcher like Garrett Cole. They let him go deep. And Rio went about 90 in. But these are not 110 pitch starts or anything like that. No, and none of these guys are Garrett Cole. Yeah, that's... That's I mean, Archer. Giolito's the closest, but no, none of these guys are Garrett Cole. Yeah, Giolito's the closest, but like they're not going to give him the, the length that you know anyone will give Garrett Cole. All right, so I think uh, Grinky's the least likely to make my rosters, and that kind of suffices the pitching. So it sounds like a low-owned Seattle stack is where he would go. I don't mind, you know, oh, I don't, I like Marco. I don't mind occasional, like a San Francisco like one-off with some of these guys like Flores who will be popular in cash games, but Solano might get a little love, but 
I don't know. Nothing about the San Francisco offense gets me excited. The same. I mean, that's kind of what, why I like Marco. Um, what about the Oakland offense? <clears throat> I could definitely get on board with the Oakland offense because they're going to go underappreciated today. Because I, it, for me, Zach Grinky is more name than domination at this point of his career. Definitely. I mean, I think he's a good pitcher, but he's far from dominant, and you can definitely get to him. Yeah, and all the pitchers playing today are decent. There isn't any, like, quote-unquote scrub. Agreed. I mean, there's a reason we have no interest in Grinky too. Amen to that one. So I do think Oakland – this is the kind of slate where I like being contrarian even more than some of the big slates because it's very even, right? Like, there's – it. The guys who are low owned are not that much worse than the guys who are high owned. I got no arguments with you whatsoever. You know, like we talk about being different, but sometimes when you got Mike Trout against a scrubby pitcher and then a scrubby here versus a good pitcher, that's just a really difficult move to make. That is not the slate. No doubt about any of that at all. All right. So if you were trying to jump off a chalky Tim Anderson at shortstop, any favorite plays down here? Forgot the A's no longer have Marcus Simeon. Um, I like J.P. Crawford. I mean, he's going to be at the top of that lineup. Speed, power. Yeah, give me some J.P. Crawford. I and mean, this is definitely a site you can leave money on the table. And Andrews now for Oakland. No issues yep. with Andrews. I mean, I'm sure he'll be at the top of that lineup. Yeah. If we take a look at third base, this is one where I'll probably, I'll probably get some Kyle Seeger in my life as part of that Seattle stack. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a main piece of the Seattle sack. I think Seager and Chapman right there are my two guys. I mean, definitely honing in on Seattle and Oakland. So that's kind of where I'm going to be at. Yeah, me too. I think they're slightly lower owned. Again, it's day one on baseball. And right. Don't, don't go blowing your load all on one day or anything like that. Just remember that if you're going to play lower owned stacks and GPPs, whoever you pick today, whether that was during the main slate or the night slate, uh, if you're – whole goal is to play more contrarian on baseball, which is usually the best way to go. Like it's contrarian for a reason. You're not supposed to necessarily, not everybody's going to win GPPs day one. Oh, couldn't agree more, man. It's just the truth. So um, let's see here. Outfield. I'll be looking at like a Loriano probably from Oakland. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Interested to see what these lineups look like, but Mitch Haniger's back now. I mean, he was good. Yeah, I mean, it was only a couple of years ago when we were having the, the debate that you clearly won. Who's the better hitter for Seattle right now, Mitch Haniger and Nelson Cruz? haniger has been hurt since then, and Cruz has been done nothing but hit home runs. So I don't think I came out on top on that one. I forgot that was even a question. That seems like <laughs> forever. Ago. I'll say this, though. Like, something, you know, in basketball, like the NBA, like, guy had missed, like, what, two years or at least a year at this point, like, you would never play a guy like that in his first game back. In baseball, it might give you hesitation, but, like, if he's hitting second in the lineup, I mean, he's in play. Do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, this is not a situation where uh, they're going to pull Hanniger in the sixth so they don't right. give him too big of a workload. <laughs> this is not basketball like that. Yeah. I mean, you'd rather have him not have been hurt, but, like, he's in play if he's in the lineup. Agreed. So, again, cash games. I would probably go Gosp and Giolito. As much as I like Chris Bassett, I don't mind playing the ownership game in cash games and going with the chalkier guy. If he gets blown up, he gets blown up. You can still find a way to get into the money and get in the top half. And GPPs, we seem to be looking at Giolito, Gonzalez as basket, Bassett. And then for GPP stacks, we're mostly looking at Oakland and Seattle. Uh, as far as like cash games, yeah, get the Mike Trouts in your lineup. Um, or some of the other guys I mentioned were going to be really popular. Uh, the one guy from San Francisco, Wilmer Flores, lefty masher. He's going to get a lot of love today against Marco Gonzalez. For sure, no doubt about it. And, man, uh, I like Marco in that spot. Agreed. You know, the Houston guys might get a little bit of love. I'm, I, I won't go here. Even though if I don't play Bassett in the lineup, I'm not really interested in the Houston offense. Uh... I agree, man. I like Bassett a lot. He's my favorite pitcher on the slate. Honestly, if this were an all-day slate, I would Bassett would be wildly in play for me. I love Bassett at home. I'm a huge fan of Bassett. Um, the hound or the pitcher? Both. 
but the okay. pitcher we're speaking about right now. So I think his nickname is Basset Hounds as well. So kind of works both ways. Um, I I never like want to pick on Houston, but their lineup's far from what it used to be. No Springer, it's just not as good as it used to be. Uh, I like Basset a lot here. And if I were to one off anybody from Houston, it would be Alvarez because he's just a double home run waiting to happen. Uh, for sure, no doubt about it. So it's fun to have him back this year. I, I just yeah. it's fun to watch. Man, if he were out, like that's it would be like my favorite pitcher of the day. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And he's I'll, still good for a couple strikeouts, though, maybe too. That's true. I'll say this, and you never know how things are going to play out because a guy that we like to know the industry liked a lot, Luis Castillo. Pretty sure he's given up six runs in the first. Well, I'm glad my Kyle Hendricks play doesn't seem as bad right now. Then this is true. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I have no. Cardinals, but I'm sure most people don't. Um, yes, yeah, six nothing Cardinals. Wow, wow, that is that's incredible. So that is incredible. I know. <laughs> that's so baseball, right? It is, and I also just because we're on this, like I want people to, you know, I know most of you guys listening to this have played DFS for a long time, and you're not really, you're not just going to jump off the ship, you know, based on one start. Some of these guys have only thrown a few innings you know, in spring training, right? Like, like, don't abandon who people are after one slate like this. You can still like Castillo next time out. I use Darvish, and he's already given up a run in the first inning. So, and if the Dodgers get shut out today, you know, they didn't score in the first inning, they're, they're still really good at offense. And I thought about stacking Texas, and unfortunately I didn't, and they are up 4 nothing in the first, and Keller has yet to record an out. 5 nothing. Well, see, this is what we're talking about right here, guys. Texas is not a good baseball team, but that doesn't mean they can't be good today. And think about that as why contrarian in baseball makes more sense than all the other sports put together. For sure, no doubt. Your, your sample size on a daily basis is so small. Think about a great player like a Mike Trout who can get, we'll say, five at-bats in a day. He can line out twice, get zero points, walk for two, you know, strike out, still sitting at two points, and then hit a fly ball to the warning track. And you're like, man, I got two points. Doesn't mean he was even, he could just even, he could even see the ball that well that day and still only get two points. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's just like, that's baseball, right? Like, um, man, like, I don't know, Jack Peterson, who you loved earlier, I used some, the Cubs today. His first out base is loaded, one out, his first at bat as a Cub. He lined a ball to the left field. It was a sack fly, but man, like a couple inches, it's a, a you know, basis clearing double, and I'm off to the races. Right, and I liked Hendricks, and so did you today. He wasn't very good. Well, he's oh. better than Castillo, at least, but he wasn't very good. But, like, he just missed, like, six strikeouts. I swear, like, foul ticks that this could have gone a completely different way, a couple of seeing eye singles here and there. You know, you can be wrong and be right and be right and be wrong more in baseball than any other sport. I don't feel good about Hendricks today at all. I mean, for me, like he walked the fleet off guy in the first two innings. That was a, I can't say anyone was good after that personally. Well, I didn't say he was good. I just, he missed a bunch of strikeouts. Like, like he had O2 two counts and then he left uh, like to Frazier. One of the runs came in because he got Frazier down O2, fouled off a couple of balls and then missed on a pitch right down the middle. Like he had him and then he let him go on a bad pitch. Oh God. That's, I hate that. But that's, you know, you deal with that for 200 days of the baseball season that, like, I remember, like, five years ago recommending Yasmani Grandal when he was still on the Dodgers. And, like, I was really, really bullish on him. And uh, the next day, somebody was whining about how he had no points. And then somebody else commented, like, you do realize that, like, the wind shifted in that game and he had three balls out to the warning track. Like, he just missed home runs three different times. I didn't even know that, but it was nice to hear somebody, like, comment on it, like, you can make right plays and be wrong, and you can make wrong plays and be right. Like a bloop double is not a good piece of hitting. I mean, yeah, I used Wilson Contreras in two of my three lineups today. The, right on that note, his first, his second at bat, he reached out an error to second base or ground ball that just went right through Fraser's legs. Stole second. He stole second and scored a run. So seven points when he should have gotten zero right there. Now, exactly. I will say I respect that hustle. Sure. No reason not to respect the like, hustle. It's just a weird sport compared to Yes. Game. Like, he made that happen, so it's not like, oh, like, that's so shitty, but, like, there's no – it's, like you just said, it's a weird sport like that where it's just so much different 
DFS wise than any other sport. Like you've heard me whine so many times listening to announcers when they say make dumb comments like uh, a pitcher will make a brilliant pitch and the guy will like barely get the ball, the bat on the ball. And it will like somehow just like scoot down like uh, the infield and he'll be able to beat it out. They're like, that's just a brilliant piece of hitting, getting the bat on the ball right there. I mean, no, he was totally fooled. It just happened to go in a spot where nobody was. And then the next guy, they come up next inning, hits a line drive right at the center field. And like, that's just a great piece of pitching. I'm like, no, it's not. like, what are you talking about? Like the results doesn't mean it was a good you know, piece of hitting or a good piece of pitching. Sometimes you hit the ball hard at people and sometimes you don't hit it well and it just falls. Well, it's like DFS. Exactly. So, guys, all right. End rant. Sorry about that. You guys have a good day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.